dearly beloved in Christ. Today is supposed to be the twentieth Sunday in ordinary time, but since it falls on the fifteenth of August, which is the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, today's feast takes precedence. This feast of Assumption is a major feast in the Church and a holy day of obligation. As a dogma, this feast teaches that Mary, the mother of Christ, was taken up to the glory of heaven, body and soul, at the end of her earthly life. She remains for us a perfect example of a disciple who totally surrendered her will to God. While she remains sinless, this feast emphasizes that her immaculate body and soul that bore and protected Jesus, the Son of God, never experienced decay. Today's Gospel from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 56, begins with Mary's visit to her cousin Elizabeth after the angel had communicated to her the good news of Elizabeth's pregnancy. When Mary greeted Elizabeth, two remarkable things happened. First, the infant in Elizabeth's womb leapt for joy, as described in the scriptures. Secondly, Elizabeth cried out and said to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. She added, And how does this happen to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Remember that Mary at this time had not yet told Elizabeth about what the angel had told her, and Mary probably was just a few days pregnant and therefore not yet visible to the eye. This should not surprise anyone because according to the scriptures, Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So Mary's greeting was joyfully received, not only by Elizabeth, but also by John the Baptist, who happened to be the infant in Elizabeth's womb. The movement of joy by the infant in the womb is an acknowledgement of both Mary's presence and the significance of the child that Mary was carrying in her womb. This explains what the angel said to his father Zachariah in Luke chapter 1, verse 15, even before John was conceived. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. Elizabeth praises Mary for her faith, using words reflected in the prayer, Hail Mary. Mary then burst into song, glorifying God a song which we now know as the Magnificat. In that song, she prophesied, saying that all generations will call me blessed. In the passage that preceded today's Gospel, the angel Gabriel called Mary blessed when he came to announce to her that she will be the mother of God. And Elizabeth, in today's Gospel, also calls Mary blessed for believing and trusting that God's promise to her will be fulfilled. In Mary's young mind, she probably did not think about the social implication of such innocent but brave move. However, when she willingly gave her consent, the angel explained to her that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her. Brothers and sisters, today's gospel reveals to us that the presence of God can bring out nothing but goodness, the very best of outcomes in everything. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she celebrated Mary's willingness to, to say yes to God. Considering the Jewish culture, one would expect Elizabeth to feel sorry for Mary, who was unmarried yet pregnant, because of the public shame she would face as a result of that. Through her own experience of barrenness, Elizabeth knew what it meant to be ridiculed 
and isolated. The social implication was clear to her, and she also understood what it means to be visited by God in a special way. Elizabeth neither judged nor condemned Mary. Instead, she blessed her and glorified God for her. Like Mary, let us learn to glorify God in every circumstance where his will is manifested in our lives. And like Elizabeth, may we stand firm in encouraging anyone trying to respond to the will of God in their life. Thanks for reflecting on the world with me. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.